Okay, so this is the uh, video for installing of the uh, Comet um, ball bearing end caps in a Ford long shaft uh, motor, a 3110 or a 3115. First step is to redu uh, loosen the bolt that holds the collar on. This is the brush cover. Second step is to uh, pull the springs back and pull the brushes out. There are four brushes around the periphery of the motor. So we'll just hook that. Sorry, hook that here and pull the brush out. And we'll do that four times around the motor. Okay. This is number three. Let's see here. There we go. And number four. Okay, next step is just to remove the two large, two long screws that hold the motor together. We'll be reusing these screws. Generally, they're quarter inch coarse. There's the brush cover, the bushing. We'll not be reusing this part. The main casing. And again, I always emphasis, emphasize that we. Uh, Put the shaft in in a, in a soft a soft jaws in your uh, in your vise. Uh, you don't want to start to have to start sanding or filing this because the spool or the new spool for the comet winch won't fit. So or your your existing spool. This just slides off. This is the bushed end, and that leaves us with the armature. And that's where we'll start to assemble. Um, the motor with uh, the ball bearing end caps in the next segment. Okay, so now that you have the motor disassembled, <clears throat> first step is to take the spacer I've sent you. The spacer I've sent you, slide that on the shaft. Take the main bearing cap, always with the open end towards the armature. Slide that on. You have to just finagle that on a little bit because it's a very snug fit. Put that back in the vise. Now on this cover there is a dimple which corresponds to the, the key in the main housing. So what you do is roughly line that up with the key. And that will ensure that when you insert the two main screws, they'll align with the holes that are drilled and tapped in the cover. In the far end, you put the brush holder on. The brush holder has a key as well, which aligns with the key way in the outer housing as such. I've pre-assembled your kit obviously on the bench so I have the number of shims already determined. I'll send those to you and they'll be noted as such in the package. I'll also send you some spare shims if you have to fine tune the um, fine tune the end play. The cover with the bearing has no no key to it. It just has to align with the two holes in the brush holder. So just gently put that on and rotate it until the holes line up. That'll be then that'll ensure that you can you can insert the two long screws. Now when you're at this point you can just hold everything together and check for end play and we have about 30 thou of end play there. You can just barely see it if you look very closely. So now when we put the screws in and tighten it up We'll just check the other end quickly to make sure it hasn't moved. Okay. Insert the screw and 
you may have to just fiddle around with it a little bit to get it to go in the hole and start and you can just thread that in finger tight to hold it together. Okay, 7 sixteenths wrench, just snug that up. And now we've replaced those uh, bushing end caps with ball bearing end caps. Last step we have to do is just pull back the springs, each individual spring as we did the reverse of what we did when we disassembled the motor and insert the brushes. Four and we just go around and, and do that. There we go. So now the motor will run pretty much. The run motor is ready to run. Last step you have to do is just reinstall this cover, the brush cover, or some, some of you will run it without, depending on your field conditions. If you have very dusty field conditions, you'll leave it on. If you have no dust, you can leave it off. It certainly helps dissipate the heat. We just tighten that up and your motor is ready to go with uh, Comet ball bearing end caps. Okay, I realize we didn't get a very good shot of putting the brushes in, so I've just repositioned the camera and I'll give you a better look at how I do that. So I just hook it like that. I have my hand on the motor so I can pull the brush out of the, up out of the way and I just insert the brush. as such. We just go around and do all four. I think you can see better on this ang camera angle. Oop, keep nudging the camera. Sorry about that. Maybe the camera's a bit too close. Okay. There we go. Okay, now, once your motor's been assembled, you have to put it in your uh, Comet winch. The easiest way to do that is just to insert it very carefully, shaft end first, obviously, and have it sit on the machined diameter and hold it with the shaft. And the ferrules um, adjust for the size of the quarter inch bolts. Three quarter inch bolts is a plenty of strength to hold this together for, um, for uh, sailplane use. Uh, we're not starting a V8 with this anymore. We're uh, doing maybe 250 pounds of line tension and that is uh, three quarter inch bolts is, is plenty of holding force. They are a little bit loose, uh, there's a little bit of play, and that'll, that's just to help you uh, get them started. Uh, the ferrules do not fit super tight in the motor, in the machined, in the machined ball bearing end cap. There we go. So you can rotate a little bit, there's a little bit of play to get them all started. Okay, so we got the motor all snugged up. Our last task is to just install the spool. So we'll just lift the belt off it so we can get it started. There we go.
and we'll just insert the belt the bolt. There you go. So there's your uh, ball bearing equipped Comet winch. Uh, just needs to be wired, have the solenoids installed, and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching.